Okay, I'm with Jordan Churton with the Young Turks, and uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is I heard you talking about uh, the Netroots Nation not really being a liberal, uh, a liberal or a progressive type of a conference, and I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about that. Uh, are you an absolutist? Are you an idealist? Why would you not consider this progressive, maybe with a lesser degree of degradation? No, no, I'm not an absolutist by, by no means. I think I have a different perspective than a lot of uh, kind of liberal media, liberal media or others because I actually have been out in the country for the last year and a half, right. probably like 80% of the time. Right. And I cover a lot of stories that are being ignored. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the ongoing water crisis in Flint, uh, the pipeline in North Dakota, uh, Standing Rock, uh, the lead crisis in East Chicago, all things the Democratic Party has largely ignored. Right. Um, so I see, not only through those emergencies, but through the disappearing middle class, uh, the policies that the Democratic Party and a lot of folks at conferences like this are pushing uh, are not enough for the majority of the country. And I also saw on the campaign trail they don't, people don't realize a lot of independents and Republicans like Bernie Sanders' message, right. which is a progressive economic message. Right. So, to me, I, 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 you're never going to agree on any, everything as a party, but on the major issues, to me, and a large portion of America is economic inequality. I don't think the Democratic Party has learned a lesson from the election. Their proposals that they're pushing forward now do not go far enough. I think the phrase incrementalism or gradualism is really uh, a mask for we'll give you crumbs because we got to please our donors. So that, that's how I view things. No, I believe it or not, I, I think I've, I agree with everything that you just said. Now, what I don't think I agree with is uh, saying that particular statement about the Democratic Party or Netroots in this regard. I think there are many, many folks within the party, myself included, which uh, I'm a uh, devout activist as well as a journalist or a blogger. I think we were out there putting that putting that exact message out there. What really happens is we don't have the coverage by the news media for people who are pushing that message. In other words, uh, there's young Turks out there pushing that sort of message. There's politics done right. There are several progressive stations out there trying to push it, but they do not get the coverage. Mm -hmm. What would you? What would? What can we do to ensure that the ABC, CBS, NBC, CNNs, and others? carry the message because my contention is there are enough within the party proper that has your that have your message but, uh, but your message is simply not getting out there I'm gonna tell you something that you're gonna consider radical okay I don't give a damn okay. CNN ABC the Washington Post I don't think it's radical at all carry our message because the bottom line is these are all corporations right they are run by multi-billion dollar conglomerates right. doesn't make them evil but that's just a fact so there is a certain line and I, by the way I used to work at Fox and right. MSNBC sure in the beginning of my career so they are not going to carry they are not going to focus on standing rock right because it involves oil I and agree big banks. Yes. they are not going to focus on Flint because it's not sexy to them and it doesn't give them ratings and they need to get ratings for their corporate parents right to me and I think what the young Turks tries to do and I try to do as their as a reporter is inform the public of the real news that's being ignored to activate the right. public yes. because when I went to standing rock I probably had between 100 and 200 people come up to me personally and say, your videos are why I came. When I was in Flint, I had, there were six residents that were arrested uh, for the crime of being too loud at a town hall. They were facing felony charges. I was the only reporter that stayed on it, and those charges were dropped. The reason, because our viewers rallied around those people. Our viewers called the mayor's office. Right. Our viewers called the police department and flooded them. So, the, the real, uh, how you get change is not only from CNN and the New York Times mentioning you. Right. They'll do it for four minutes and then they'll go back to what, what Trump is tweeting. Right. It's getting your audience not only informed but activated because the audience is filled, not just my audience, I'm sure yours right. too, with other activists. Right. Who are then going to be like, I didn't know that this is still going on in Flint or here or here. Right. Police brutality, uh, financial corruption. It is political activism uh, is very closely aligned with independent journalism because a lot of our viewers want to do something. Right. They just don't know what, they need to know first what are the problems. Well, Jordan, I, I can't disagree with anything there as well. And I think that's, that's, that's a good statement. 
Now, there's one thing that I think uh, I would ask of all of us doing this type of media, because we are all mo doing a whole lot of social media. We're all trying to get through alternative media, given that the main stations are not going to cover these things. But at the same time, I hope that all of us leave the doors open for those people that are still, I don't want to sound condescending, but somewhat misguided, but, but give them some space for us to bring them in. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Hey, listen, I always say this. Like, I don't like, uh, I don't love Nancy Pelosi politically. Right. right. I don't know Nancy Pelosi. I don't have a personal thing. I wish her well. Right. When Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, fell during the campaign, right. there was a lot of my viewers who wanted me to engage in kooky conspiracy theories and all this. I said, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what happened to her, but I don't like her policies, but I wish her well. I don't, you know, I don't wish evil on anybody because... Even if I think their policies are misguided, I would hope the majority of these politicians, they entered politics for the right reasons, you would hope. And at their root, they think they want to create change. I just think they're misguided on how they're going to create change or how bad the situation is. But no, I mean, the bottom line is it's a lot of people, it takes longer for them to wake up. I think what the Young Turks is doing, I think what the progressive movement is doing is saying, no, no, no. The country is in a crisis. It's a 30 to 40 year crisis, and we cannot live under incrementalism anymore. We cannot live under gradualism. FDR was not an incrementalist. He saw the crisis. Later in life, he was. Yes. Right. He saw the crisis at hand, and he he instituted some serious changes in terms of policy. Uh, I believe if John F. Kennedy would have lived, you might have seen similar things uh, to that. So I think the bottom line is. If Nancy Pelosi wants to come out tomorrow and say, you know what, I'm for Medicare for All, I will do jumping jacks for Nancy Pelosi. I don't agree on anything for her, but this is about policy, nothing else. Jordan Charlton, Young Turks. Young Turks. You're a good man. Thank you very much. You for too, sir. Here. Thanks for having me. All right.